City Massacres Monster Madness. Little Shop of Horrors is a low-budget comedy from 1960 directed by Roger Corman. It centers around a young man named Seymour who works at a florist shop. The shop is run down and doesn't get a lot of business. That is, until Seymour grows a special plant that resembles a Venus flytrap. Everybody comes to the shop to see this new plant, but the problem, only known to Seymour, is that the thing lives on human blood. Blood? You like blood? At first, he's able to feed it by the drop from his own fingers, but as the plant grows, so does its appetite. More! More! But I'm already anemic. Seymour accidentally hits a man with a rock, causing him to get run over by a train. While it was a complete stroke of bad luck, Seymour decides to feed the body to his plant. Feed me! That's the basic gist. You can see where this movie is going. It's what you'd call a dark comedy, something that audiences didn't see a whole lot of back then. Sure, there were already lots of comedy horror films like the numerous Abbott and Costello movies and even Warner Brothers cartoons. The mixture of laughs and chills has been commonplace, but the way in which Little Shop of Horrors deals with the death of certain characters for the sake of humor was an odd type of its own. It's also very slapsticky and cartoonish. What'd you say? Oh, I'm a ventriloquist. You're a what? A ventriloquist. Feed me! It's not a great movie by any means, but it has kind of a humble vibe that makes it likable. True to its title, it is a little movie. It was shot very economically in only a few days, with multiple cameras shooting simultaneously like a sitcom. For such a little movie, it's surprising to see such a big league actor like Jack Nicholson show up, playing a masochist who likes going to the dentist. I rather enjoy it myself, don't you? <laughs> oh my god, don't stop now! All he's got is a cameo, but he's the highlight of the picture. He just comes out of nowhere. Of course, this was before he was famous, even before Roger Corman's The Terror, but since the film fell into the public domain, tons of home video distributors released it, promoting Jack Nicholson, just so people would buy the movie and then find out he's only in one scene. Jonathan Hayes, on the other hand, who plays the main guy, is still best known for Little Shop of Horrors. Then you have Dick Miller, who's been in lots of B-movies, and eventually A-movies, like The Terminator and Gremlins. Even though he always has a small part, you can't forget him. The idea of a giant killer plant was a pretty neat concept for a monster. Basically, just take a Venus flytrap, make it bigger, and have it eat people. It may actually be the first movie monster of its kind. There were some written stories beforehand that involved man-eating plants, but this was the first to popularize it. At first, this movie didn't make a huge impact. It had a cult status which grew gradually, and by the 80s, it seemed to have a huge revival, being the basis for the piranha plants in Super Mario Brothers. It was made into a musical in 1982, and in 86, the musical was adapted into a big-budget film remake starring Rick Moranis, a brilliant casting choice. It was directed by Frank Oz, the puppeteer and voice of Yoda. The 86 version is one of those instances where the remake is actually better than the original, with amazing special effects and production design. If you see it, make sure you see the original ending. 